Insurgency Sandstorm released an update, and with it comes some bug fixes, some new content, and of course, more bugs. Just an FYI, you may get this when you first log in, so you know it happens to everyone. They're probably going to hotfix it, but just be aware. So essentially, this is just a typical Sandstorm update. Now, I'm going to be going through what the update brings here, and then I want to talk about the future of Sandstorm, because it's what's in the next update that's really going to change the Sandstorm experience for the rest of its lifespan, however long that may be. But let's talk about what's been dropped in this update here. A couple new weapons, one for the security, one for insurgents, and these weapons are going to be in the Marksman class. Because of the restrictions on that class, though, it may be difficult to get your hands on these initially. But for security side, we've got the Bolt Action TAC-338, chambered in the mighty 338 Lapua. The default loadout here for the weapon costs two points, and it comes with a five-round magazine. Unfortunately, there is no extended mag here, so you better hit those five shots. For the insurgent counterpart, they've added the L96A1, a bolt action rifle also chambered in 338. The default loadout costs two points and comes with a five round magazine as well, though for the insurgents you can upgrade this to a 10 round magazine. Honestly, as far as balance goes with the game, I find it pretty much unaffected by any new weapons added because for the most part, any weapon in Sandstorm is a viable option. The time to kill is so low in this game that it's easy to run whatever you want, put whatever you want on it, and personally, I like this because it means that you're not trying to own the noobs all the time with some sort of meta weapon and you can be gunned down by basically anything. So the additions here are more of a visual enjoyment for the players that like that gun prawn and everything like that, and nothing's going to be considered overpowered. By the way, right now the AUG is a meta. In addition to the new weapons though, they've also added a new map called Train Yard, a close quarters map with fighting in between the train cars and various elevated locations to accommodate for those newly added snipers. But more than likely, you're going to need something to bring for some quick target acquisition. It gets pretty tight between those train cars. On top of all this is something I'm actually really excited to dive into, a new limited time game mode called Arms Race. Essentially, it's a team-based gun game. You load it in with a random weapon, you kill two players, and then you get another random weapon. This goes on and on and on until someone on either team gets two kills with the final weapon. So yeah, gun game. A nice little addition if you ask me, it's a good way to try out some new weapons that you may have never tried before, and also flex on the homies by getting good kills with difficult weapons. New cosmetics are now in the game as well, these will be about $3 each for both the outfits and the weapon skins. If you buy them all together, it's only about 10 bucks right now with a discount. To me, Insurgency's cosmetics have always been super reasonable, so if you can, support the game out that way. For security, the paid cosmetic is called the Chemical Combat Outfit, with several pieces coming with this purchase, looks like this guy. And for the Insurgents, you've got the Protective Gear Outfit, looks like this. And then there are also paid weapon cosmetics, the Desert Veteran skin for the security. These skins are only available on these weapons. And the Dusty Weapon skins for the Insurgents. Again, only available for specific weapons. And that's all that came with this update here. But with this update out of the way though, I wanna talk about what's going on in the next updates. And one thing I think is a really big deal. So in the future, thankfully, they're going to have some new lighting for a few maps. Thank goodness. We'll have new lighting for Tideway, Hideout at Night, and Tell. Personally, I hate Tideway lighting. I have hated it for a very long time, hated playing that map. So hopefully this will bring a fresh take to it and I'll actually enjoy the map. And then for one of the future updates, they're also planning on adding a new map. They haven't shown off a whole lot, but they did show this picture. So uh, it's gonna be a green map. That'll be nice, I like green. Now, on to what I think is such a big deal and makes me think this is probably the last year of support for the game. I kind of hope I'm wrong, but we'll see. Right now we're on update 1.16. That's the update that just launched. And in the year three bundle, it goes until 1.18. That's all they've talked about so far. That's all they've mentioned is up to 1.18. So in my opinion, these will likely be the last few updates the game will receive. With the game releasing back in 2018 and holding a player base pretty steady until 2024 without hardly any difficulty finding matches along the way, it's been a very good life for Insurgency Sandstorm. But one of the solidifying factors to me that the game is nearly done and will likely be done after 1.18 is in 1.17, they're planning to bring crossplay into the mix between console and PC. And this will be great for the Sandstorm player base. It will greatly expand the ability to matchmake even if you don't see many players online. Just an FYI, you're gonna be able to opt in or out of crossplay, so not everybody has to participate here. But this is what makes me think the game is almost done. Once crossplay gets implemented, the content will be enough to continue supporting the servers until eventually the player numbers dwindle over the next couple of years and the game finishes its lifespan. 
They wanted to combine the player bases so the game lasts longer and longer. That's just sort of my theory here. From there, I think they may just put a skeleton crew on it to manage the servers, maybe do some hot fixes, and the team will move on to a different game. Luckily though, with this game, you can host your own servers. So even if the game itself does die on the official servers or they close those down, you're gonna be able to still play using a server browser with your own personal rented servers and mods. Right now, PVP servers are pretty rare to come by, but they are available. But I think it's great the game can never officially be killed because you've given the keys to the community here. If I'm wrong here though, I am here for it. It would be pretty cool to see some sort of new insurgency game in the future, maybe something with a little bit more of a jungle setting, or even make it a unique style of game mode to differentiate from the other games out there. I recently played a game called Strident as a demo, and I really enjoyed the way it was several different teams on one map competing for sections of the map. I think having more than one team on larger maps could be a lot of fun with the mechanics in this game, but that's just a personal opinion. Who knows if we'll see another insurgency game. All in all though, I have enjoyed Sandstorm over the years and I'm glad that I can hop back in and play this new update for a few days. I'll be streaming some of that over on Twitch probably right now. So if you head over there, you can catch me Tuesday, Wednesday, and Fridays in the afternoons. But that's all with this one. What do you guys think? Is my hypothesis correct about this next update? Or maybe I missed some news along the way and they've promised more than that? Let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, a like would be great. If you didn't, a dislike is fine. And until the next one, blend in until you need to stand out.